just about right. You know, I was doing some writing and uh, ran into one of those kinds of people that just seem to be full of what we used to call vitriol. They have acid, as it were, coming out of their words and their, their message is very hate-ridden. You know, they always like to use terms like Hitler and Germany and talk about the Holocaust, the Shoah, as though they were there, as though they were experts in the subject, and as though they understood what it was like for the Jewish people to go through the agony that what we call Klal Israel. In other words, there's in Jewish understanding, there's this idea or this concept that what we know, we know by way of almost like a collective consciousness. It's not it's not accurate, it's not scriptural, but there is, seems to be something different that if one of us suffer, we all suffer. So if I wanted to say that the unity of the faith, being that we are all Jews, who are Jews, that Klal Israel is the idea that if one of us die, we all die. And if one universe dies, one soul dies, and the whole universe dies, is what our Jewish writers taught us. And that to tell a Jew, because they're saying, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do, that forgiveness is not the answer to Shoah. Mercy is not the answer, that God is not the responsible party to be able to say, we can forgive, is to deny the very viability of salvation by Jesus himself, who is a Jew born of Jewish parents. For surely in some way, though we know he is God and he's son of man and that we do not make him out to be only Jewish, but that he is rather God. In some way, sometimes it frustrates me when I listen to some hatred against Christians for being Christians, for sharing the love of God when the mercy of God is being so demonstrated that they need to somehow take their political Zionism and make it into some political party where they begin to hate one another and tear at each other and bite and chew and argue and debate and get so politically minded that they're no good to anyone. They're only good for their cause. And the word zealot fits them perfectly because the word zealot really came from the political party that was in Israel at the time. Zelotes was the one who started it. It was a Jew who had taken up the cause of liberation of Israel at all costs, no matter what. It's kind of like the Christian Zionists today that are wrong, that say, we love Israel no matter what. Never mind that the government right now is getting ready to fight Jew versus Jew, and never mind that the Jewish settlers now are killing Jews to take over land that they want to force the Israeli government, Jewish government, to take that maybe God did not give. Never mind that. And never mind that Jesus said, don't get involved in politics. And never mind that the nation of Israel is going to sell itself to the Antichrist until they realize they've sold themselves to the wrong person. Never mind that. We support them no matter what. Politics is a drug that will take you into a place you don't want to be. It is an elixir of the humanistic mentality that somehow drives the emotions to a place of absolute faith in it and devotion to it that it becomes the reality of hatreds and division and strife. Because God never intended there to be democracy. That was not God's purpose or design. He never said you have the right to have rights. If anything, he said, you will be obedient. For every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We are not here 
to learn how to vote. We're not here to learn how to run a political party. We're not here to set up democracies around the world because they're the worst form of government there is. They're absolutely worthless. Meaningless, worthless, faithless, and they do not take responsibility and accountability for who they govern. One man does, and if he stands before the people, then he is accountable for the people. And we've seen how that works. And God treated it as such. For surely unto Daniel, he gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream, and Daniel interpreted it for him. And in that interpretation, he showed the head of gold. And what is democracy? Feet of miry clay. Because we see that there is no one man. There is no leadership. There's that miry clay that just isn't very firm. It's all mushy and gushy and can be easily manipulated and moved into different ways and means. And spiritually, that's wrong. Better to have a righteous dictator not be righteous. A righteous dictator than to have an ungodly democracy. Because even in a godly democracy, nobody takes accountability and responsibility. So you see, in some ways, yes, we live in the land of democratic process, but that isn't and doesn't mean that that is what God intends for us to be. We are to prefer one another, not to be out there voting and causing each one another to be working on elections and re-elections year after year after year, and every year there is an election. Rather, we're to share the good news of Jesus Christ, who is able to turn people who have that vitriol, that bitterness, that anger, that malice, that, that very anti-Christ spirit that goes against not just the Jewish people, but against all Christians, that even as I was sharing with this person about how they were being misled into getting too carried away into politics, they come on and say how the Bible can't be relied on, how there is no God, and how Jesus isn't real. And, oh, how sad. We must feel the agony and the sorrow. We must identify the same way that the Jew does on Shoah, to say we are one. We as Jews all died in Shoah. A third of our people died, but we as one felt it. Even if one Jew died, we felt it. For if one die, it's too much. And if a Jew could come to that conclusion without Messiah, then how dare we not, as Christians, know that if one soul go to hell, it is too much. For surely I will tell you, that any soul that dies without Messiah, any Jew that died without Jesus, any person, Christian, place, or thing that doesn't have the Son of God in them, went to hell because they had an opportunity to know. And that includes Shoah, that includes Holocaust, that includes all things. There is no separation between Jew or Gentile when it comes to salvation. For there is only one name whereby any man may be saved, and that name is Jesus. And you can call him Yeshua or Yehoshua. You can call him the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, whatever you want to call him. And for all those Yahushua's, no, you can't call him that. But the reality of God caring so much about even the people that hated him, that he would say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, while he was hanging on the cross, dying, How dare we not do all we can, pray more, care more, dare more for the sake of even those that hate us, that are out there spewing vile garbage and lies. How dare we not care for them too? For even they know not what they do. We who are men and women of God, please, for God's sake, for the ungodly people that are out there that are getting worse. Bad enough that the Christian has gotten distracted from their purpose and design that God has made them, which is to share Jesus to the world, to declare and to make disciples of all nations. 
bad enough that they've gotten distracted into the humanistic way of thinking that they have to become involved in all the different governments of the world and become politically motivated and oriented, that they would not serve Jesus in what he's called them to do, God forbid that now when we see the world going down the cesspool of life and the sewer and the gutter and becoming vile and disgusting and bitter, fit for the Valley of Megiddo, we ought to reach out more in prayer, especially to care. That we do what we were called to do in the first place. Let us not get caught up in the world and its ways. Let's seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and let all these other things be added. Let's share Jesus to everyone, everywhere, at all times. That nowhere at any time there could be any opportunity missed or any realization possibly occur where some soul, one person of anyone, ilk, whether Muslim, whether president, whether Christian, whether Jew, whether Gentile, whether Jehovah's Witness, whether Mormon, would miss out on hearing an opportunity to know Jesus in a personal way and find salvation that God has provided for them. We ought to fight, not the people, ourselves. We ought to fight ourselves and our distractions and our sinfulness. And we ought to go to the uttermost with the utmost that we have to reach out and touch those souls that are perishing because it's getting worse out there. Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who took upon him the form of a servant, even the Son of Man. And he came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life for a ransom for many. Let us pour out our lives in agonized prayer and in worship of our God, but let us reach those that are unreachable and touch those that are untouchable. He died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which he died for them and rose again. If Jesus cared so much to give all he was and die of this life so that others might be saved, how much more so should we not do the same with all that we have? We don't need another Christian cruise. We don't need another visit to Israel. What we need is to save the lost. We need to count the cost and to reach out to every soul that doesn't know him and to make disciples of those and to share and to care and to not let anyone get comfortable sitting on their chair in a pew in a church and not afraid to share the truth it's time to get up and go go out and do what god wants you to do let all the mega churches be always involved in all the ministries they do but everyone get involved and everyone do rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that we be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that you yourselves are there called and that you should inherit a blessing. If we bless, we'll be blessed. If we give grace, we'll receive grace. If we give mercy, we'll receive mercy. If we forgive, we'll be forgiven. But if we don't, we won't and we won't be forgiven. God help us to do that which God has called us to do. God help us to be what God has meant us to be. God make us to become like sons and daughters of God that we should become.